Eu achava que o melhor que podia acontecer era. I thought that the best thing that could happen was for me to have an accident and die. That would resolve everything. I became a mother at the height of my depression. During the day, I took two tablets to keep me standing, and at night, I took two tablets to get me to sleep. My name is Elaine Cristina Santana Franceschini. I'm 47 years old, and I spent three years of my life with depression. My mother had moved from a city to the region I live in today, San Jose dos Campos, and she brought her eight children with her, nine including me. It was very difficult because my father had cheated on her and she came here with all these children. We went through a lot of hardship. We had nothing to eat at home. We were also abandoned, so she had to give her children away. I was given to a woman who had two daughters, and she needed help to take care of them, so she took me in. However, as the days went by, her husband didn't like me. He drank a lot and he was aggressive. He was aggressive with his words. Every time he drank, he would say, send her away. One day we were playing in a pool that he had taken us to. As children play, his daughters and I were playing together. He saw that we were splashing water on each other and his youngest daughter almost drowned. He called me to the edge of the pool and said, what did you do to her? I tried explaining to him that we were playing, but he didn't understand. So he held my head under the water and kept me there. From that day on, I didn't want to be there anymore. I told the woman who had taken me in that I didn't want to stay there anymore and that I was leaving. I kept going from one person's house to another until the day that I had nowhere to go. I was 17 years old. This was when the woman called me again to live in her house. I had nowhere to go, so I accepted. When I got there, I saw that her husband had changed. This was also when I met my husband. I became pregnant and we decided to get married. This was when my problem with depression started. I didn't understand that it was depression. I became a mother at the height of my depression. During childbirth, my son was brought to me and I didn't want to take him in my arms. I felt like the most incapable person to look after a child. I went to the doctor. I remember telling one of the doctors what I was feeling and he gave me various tablets to take. So I was able to maintain myself with medication. During the day, I took two tablets to keep me standing. And at night, I took two tablets to get me to sleep. When I wasn't on medication, I would feel really ill because I always felt incapable of taking care of that child. After my son was born, when he was about a year and a half, the woman who had taken me in gave me an invitation because she knew that I was suffering. However, I was too proud. I was biased against the church and it was a tough time because a few things had happened and were being shown on the media. As I was a religious person at the time, I didn't accept it. I said, no, I won't go. One day, as a ruse to get me there, she invited me to go to the city center and I accepted. 
When we got to the front of the Universal Church, she said, Oh, we don't have time. I have to stop here for us to receive a prayer, but it will be quick. I remember that I told her, You can go, but I won't. She said, No, come with me. It'll be quick. I received one prayer. One prayer was all it took because all the depression, emptiness and the hollowness within me, of which I didn't know the cause, the heaviness in my soul and the sadness were all cast out. They were cast out. Then in that moment I said, my God, so you do exist. You are here because I have never felt this before. I didn't know that anyone could feel that light. From then on, I kept going back. This had happened on a Friday. On Saturday morning, I made a vow with God. Well, not really a vow, but I challenged him. I said deep within myself, my God, if it's true that you exist, I would throw all these tablets away into the toilet. I will flush them away and depend on you. That was when I opened all the boxes of tablets that I used to take. By then, I had been taking close to six or seven different types of tablets because I had a lot of migraines. I threw them all away. I threw them all in the toilet and flushed. From that Saturday on, I didn't take tablets anymore. I returned on Sunday and my deliverance process began. The pastor always said, you need to receive the Holy Spirit. But there were still a lot of things in me that I hadn't resolved yet. One of those things was forgiving the person who had harmed me when I was a child. It was difficult, but I said, I can see that I am well now. Then if I have the Holy Spirit, as the pastor says, I will be a thousand times better. To tell you the truth, I didn't even have a complete understanding of who the Holy Spirit was, but I wanted him. I said, I want him. If I'm well now, imagine with the Holy Spirit living in me. This was when I started to seek him. Things didn't get better. They got worse. They got worse. This was when I faced a battle because thoughts came. Are you going to forgive him? Look at what he did. Look at what others did to you. I said, my Lord, I don't care about anything else. I give them all into your hands. I don't want this in me anymore. I want your spirit. One Sunday morning, it was very special because I was seeking God. I didn't feel anything, but I had an absolute certainty in my soul. It was so glorious because he came upon me. He embraced me. He said, I am your father. You've never had a family, but I am your family. I am your father. Everything changed because after that, I was no longer alone. I was with my family now. Today, my marriage is very blessed. My husband and I are true partners. We see God in our lives all the time. The Holy Spirit is everything to me. He is life. I always keep this with me, that God lent me his life so that I can continue living here. Today, I have a life that was lent to me by God. He lent me his life because I didn't have life. Today, the life that I have has been provided entirely by him. The Holy Spirit is not only the air that I breathe. No, he is life itself in me. Today I stand only because the Holy Spirit is here. He is in me.